Now that the Pokies 57 CNC controller is able to connect to the Mach 4 successfully, I will connect a single motor to the Motor 1 port. The driver that I'll be using is a standard modular driver like this. I will be connecting the pulse and direction terminals to the step and direction pins on the Pokies 57 CNC controller. Since the controller requires an IDC ribbon connector, I'll use a 10 conductor ribbon cable. A cable pack that contains all of the connectors and ribbon cable can be purchased separately. For the ribbon cable, you'll need the 10 pin connector that looks like this. There are three pieces to this connector. One that actually connects to the male connector on the controller, a back to this connector that presses the ribbon cable to hold the cable in place and to puncture the insulation of each conductor so that there is contact with each pin. And the final piece is a strain relief. Slide the back of the connector into the slots on the side of the connector, but not all the way. Insert the cable in this orientation, so the red conductor will mate with the pin number one. The cable can be fed through the front or the back, just make sure the red conductor is mating with pin number one. Insert the ribbon cable into the connector as shown. The excess of the cable will be trimmed later. Squeeze the connector so that the ribbon cable will not move. You can use standard pliers to set the cable. Make sure to open the pliers to its widest setting. Press the back completely until you hear the click of the tabs on each side of the connector. If you have excess ribbon, trim with the blade. Curl the cable around the back of the connector to add the strain relief. Insert the strain relief until it clicks into place. This is how the connector should look after the connector is assembled. To make the cable work with a standard driver, I need to separate the conductors and expose conductors 3, 5, and 9. The conductor number 3 is for the direction signal. Conductor number 5 is for the step pulse signal. And the conductor number 9 is for 5 volts. Since I won't need the other conductors, I'm going to trim them off. So now I'm left with conductors 3, 5, and 9. I will now expose each of these three conductors so I can insert them into the terminals of the driver. I'm going to insert the assembled connector into the motor 1 slot on the controller. Since I need to wire the 5 volt conductor to two terminals on the driver, I'll add a small wire to serve as a shunt. This wire will go into the pull or pulse positive and the direction positive. These terminals may be called CP for pulse and CW for direction, depending on what driver you have. Conductor number 5 will be inserted into the pull or pulse negative terminal. And now I will insert the conductor number 3 into the direction negative terminal. This is what the final assembled connection should look like. Connected into the terminal and going straight to the driver. Only pins 3, 5, and 9 are used. And the pin number 9 going to the pulse and direction positive and pin 3 going to direction negative and pin 5 going to pulse negative. This is an 8 wire motor and will be connected in bipolar parallel mode. This will allow the motor to operate with a higher torque at lower voltages but the power supply should allow high current draw for this wiring scheme. But the power supply should allow high current draw for this wiring configuration. Check the data sheet for your motor on what 
wire colors need to be paired for the bipolar parallel configuration. For this motor, the blue and red wire will go to the A plus terminal. The black and yellow wires will go to the A minus terminal. The brown and white wires will go into the B plus terminal. And finally, the green and orange wires will go into the B minus terminal. The drivers will require a separate power supply. Don't use the power supply that's connected to the controller. In this case, I'm using a 48 volt power supply. Depending on the motor and driver conf configurations or specifications, you may be able to use a single power supply. You may also need to use multiple power supplies or a single power supply with a higher voltage and current rating. Just like the other power supply in the previous video, the terminals are labeled V plus and V minus. The V plus is in this case 48 volts positive and the V minus is the ground for the volt for the for the 48 volts. The V plus will go into the V plus in the driver. This may also be labeled as VCC and the V minus will be connected to the ground or GND terminal on the driver. I'm using a red wire for the V plus or V positive and the black wire will be for the ground. You can see that everything is wired. The wiring for the power supply to the controller can be seen in the previous video part one in this series. The ribbon cable should be connected between the controller and the driver. The motor is connected to the driver in bipolar parallel wiring configuration. And the power supply is connected to the driver to power the driver and the motor. I will first plug in the power supply that powers the controller. You will notice that the LEDs are on and the right LED is flashing. If you don't see this, if you don't see the LEDs on, then you may have not set the jumper that enables the external power supply. The little red jumper that is next to the external power supply terminals. You can also see this in part one. I will now plug the USB cable into the controller and then into the computer. Start Mach 4 by double clicking on the Mach 4 loader. You'll see a dialog box to select the profile that you're going to be using. The Mach 4 screen should look like this. You'll notice that it says the e-stop is cleared. If you don't see this, go back to the previous video where I invert the emergency stop setting. Make sure that the keyboard jogging is enabled by going to the jogging tab and pressing this button. And I'm pressing the left and right arrow keys to move the X axis. You can see the digital readout changing. I'll now plug in the driver so I can see the motor moving when I jog the motor. I am pressing the left and right button now and you can see the motor is moving in both directions. Here is a better view of the motor movement. I want to change some of the parameters for this axis so I'm going to press disable to disable the motion. This is the only way you'll be able to get access to the configuration. Click on the configure menu item and control under that and click on motors and make sure to click on the right hand side motor zero. That's going to be the X axis. Since it's not connected to a lead screw or anything, I'm going to keep the counts per unit as default. I'm changing the velocity to speed it up 400 and I want to set the acceleration really low so I can see it ramp up to speed slowly. Press apply and OK to accept the changes. I'm going to press the enable again so I can enable the motion and make sure that the keyboard input is enabled. Now let's test by pressing the left and right arrows. You'll see that it climbs up to speed slowly and also decelerates slowly. You can change the current setting and the microstepping setting using the table on the top of the driver and these relate to the dip switches that's located between the two sets of terminals. 
Remember not to make any changes like dip switch settings or wiring unless the power is disconnected and the power has dissipated from the electrical devices for about 20 seconds. The green light on the power supply is a really good indicator to make sure that the, all of the energy is drained from the power supply. This concludes part two of this series connecting and configuring the Pokies 57 CNC controller. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for part three.